So do you, Eddie. Welcome to the Crazy Club. <laughs> Welcome to the Lunatic Bin. Don't break the law. That's easy. And that is true. Don't break the law. I was saying that earlier. Why do people chance it? Like, don't, don't run that stop sign. Don't run that red light. Don't speed. Please. Let's try to break some of that money chain. I just have a different way of looking at it. They roofed you? I think I know what you mean, though. If you have an attorney, you don't exist. Everything goes through your attorney. Right. But the whole gist of this is knowing whether or not your attorney is doing a good job for you. And that's getting out there and protecting yourself and being your advocate, getting on there and whatever they throw at you as far as whatever charges or cause of action or defenses, affirmative defenses, whatever. Get on Google Scholar and do your research. Go to the law library. Get on Westlaw. That's the one I love. I love Westlaw. <clears throat> Where do you go for actual help in family court? Well, we can say this because this is a resource. Go to your clerk of the court. They may have a pro se coordinator, and they can help you with forms and stuff. Then you need to get on Google Scholar and do your legal research. And you need to go or go to the law library and talk with the law librarians. They can't give you legal advice, but they can give you um, sor the sources that you need to do legal research. That's what you could do. And first and foremost, find a good attorney in family law, someone who's good, and then be able to follow it up with whatever they tell you. Just go research it. Yeah, people are always in too big of a hurry to follow traffic laws that are meant to save lives. Not only save lives, but, geez, keep your money in your pocket. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. You weren't drinking and did four months in jail for a D. Um, one county in Florida where I'm from, um, a woman was driving twice the legal limit at night after spending an evening in the bars, got on the road, didn't have her brights on, was all, only car on the road, and struck a pedestrian. They, they did a blood test on her. She was twice the legal limit. She got six months because she was connected to the network. She got six months. Three of that was in drug, um, substance treatment and then three months in jail. And you didn't do anything, and you got four months. Think about that one. But she was connected to the sheriff. She was, like, somehow connected to his animal, like, it was an animal rescue or something. And he would put um, animals they'd get retrieved, like horses, and they'd put them with her. Police brutality is the worst. Yeah, I mean, that's corrupt all the way up, isn't it? And it's especially corrupt when it happens and they let them get away with it. Because we need the court to stop them. And I've had, personally, I've been tased. So, you know, for not they should have been tased. It's probably connected in with a bedroom, potentially. So let me see if I can find. Okay, so one of the things that we throw out, and this is why I say go do your legal research. Because you might end up with what we call a Judas lawyer. And we call them Judas lawyers after what's called a Judas horse. What is a Judas horse, you ask? Well, this is a trained horse released at the trap entrance to draw the wild ones into captivity. Think about that. So if you have a bad lawyer and they're leading you into the trap of shutting your case down, not in your favor, guess what? You just got trapped. You just got ambushed. Yeah, it's really sad what they do to kids because really kids are salvageable. Kids are salvageable. We need to make sure not to put them in that pipeline. You know, for some people it is corrupt when it doesn't work for them. And we do, and we can prove it. Um, here is the school to prison pipeline. In This is Wikipedia. Anybody can go. No, granted, it's Wikipedia. Okay, but still. You can go val validate and verify whatever you need to but they talk about it in the united states the school prison pipeline uh is the disproportionate tendency of minors and young adults from disadvantaged backgrounds to become incarcerated because it, because of increasingly harsh school and municipal policies He's fighting to end this um and this also happened with mr e who had that island you know where all those creepy powerful people were going and doing horrible things to young people um, well some of them were models who were just desperate to make it in the business okay 
but most of them seemed to be disadvantaged children. And that's sick. So they were going into the local areas near West Palm Beach, and they were targeting some of the most disadvantaged kids you can imagine. And that's what they do. And they do it for the prison, the school to prison pipeline as well. So why isn't it believed? But once against nothing, then why are you here? I'm going to mute you. Why are you here? Unless you left already, that would be good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Judge Cannon is definitely. Oh, is who? The whole Supreme Court. Um, they're politicized, that's for sure. How do you? How can you guarantee bi um, unbiased and unprejudiced court when it's political? This model in America, guilty till proven innocent. That's right. Yeah, it makes money, and it. You know, and if the person, it might not even be money. It might be that that person has an asset that you want or, you know, anything. And you could get charges pinned on you. You could get railroad, be put in prison, and you've lost everything. They are all bought. Absolutely true facts. 99% of judges are political, even biased and prejudiced when base it on politics they push supervised visits right away even when they have pending abuse criminal charge yeah you know what i've seen that like good parents who aren't getting with their kids and it goes on and on and on for years but i because i was a guardian ad litem in the dependency cases as a volunteer and i would see parents who really were in his things and they were getting visitation and it was protected. And we're all like, what? But that's how it works. So you got more protection as an abuser than you do, uh, or as an accused abuser. Because there were accused abusers, and they really weren't. They I'm waiting to hear that all judges are part of the Illuminati. I don't even know what the Illuminati is, I mean, honestly. You know, we throw the, the terms out in these words and these kind of theories, but I don't know. I don't think... Here, I'll throw that out. They're in a mafia. It's a rice bowl network. And it's there to maintain their power and their wealth and to control who does what. It's, just, it's, it's power. And guess who's being kept out of the rice bowl? You and I. And guess who's filling the rice bowl for them? Uh, you and I. Illuminati means light. I think they're opposed and people who role play like these these sheriff who call themselves constitutional sheriffs and patriots and run around like they're I'm a patriot <laughs> they're all role playing it's it's our reality and it's crazy Ooh, that's not good I'm sorry about your husband I'm, either way I mean God if you didn't they are traitors. They are traitors because they're keeping us out of the rice bowl. And by that, I mean there are enough resources. There are enough resources. If we have the billionaires that we have, there are enough resources. And the only way that they can maintain this powerful to do things to you, whether it's through the police, through the courts, um, getting shunned, getting gang stalked, you name it, your neighbor can be weaponized against you. You make your life so much heck that you want to move and they will let that happen. And you'll be like, why are you letting this happen? Why are you letting this person do horrible things to me? Well, because you're the target, but it's to get whatever you got. Maybe they want your house. Maybe you're not a vote. Um, maybe your service providers could be. Our court system is filled with a bunch of people that couldn't become. No, they basically a lot of them are. There's probably a lot of them that have undiagnosed mental illness and undiagnosed personality disorders. I think if we took them out and, like, started actually doing that, we'd probably discover a lot of really crazy stuff. And it's sad for them. They're not getting treatment. And then we're being subjected to people who need treatment. Why do they act the way they do? Why does the judge get all crazy and it's, it's like... No one did anything to you. Why are you going off the chain? Why are you putting somebody in jail because they didn't... It was a... I mean, what, what is this? What is this uh, weird brain disorder that you have? But we just overlook that, don't we? They'll get a slap on the wrist and put right back on the bench. Why? <clears throat> I 
No, you can't prove anything to people who would believe anything. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have a court system. Well, we have a court system. We don't have a judicial a justice system anymore. <clears throat> Letting the inmates run the asylum. That's pretty much what's happening. Let me see if I can find... Because we know... Researchers have researched this, that a high percentage of people who are psychopaths attracted to fields of law, attracted to becoming a judge, attracted to becoming a politician, attracted to becoming a police officer. And why? Because punish people and they can't exact their, you know, dole out their punishments if they don't have someone they can control. And that's the only way to do it because then... We're all told, you know, oh, respect the police, respect the authority, respect the judges, respect you, you keep quiet, right? <laughs> oh, thanks for the heart. Thanks for the likes and thanks for the follow. I will follow you back. Trust law is the answer. And it's like, is that like an employer number? Which one is that? To wear us down to the point that we can't fight. Oh, I like this one. This is it. To wear us down to the point we can't fight back, can't stock up supplies, break us financially. Bankrupt you. Let's call it bankrupting you. Something needs to be done. Yes, it does. We've been talking about it. What can we do? Just feebly, but at least trying is is knowing what of whatever they're accusing you of. Whether it's a cause of action or if it's you know, civilly or if it's a crime. Um, if you're suing somebody, you know, or you know, like you get into an accident and by no fault of what you know, know what you don't know, be your best advocate. If you are incapacitated, I know that's hard and you probably wouldn't be on my live right now if you were, but make sure you have somebody in place that can actually thing to do, you know, learn how to sit around and do it. I swear, if you're going to read certain books, you know, and, and scriptures and stuff, why not read some case law? I swear. Because <laughs> I think more than anything that's going to help you is actually getting out there and reading case law. I hate to say it. But yeah, and a revolution doesn't have to be um, bad. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in the common sense of the term. We could do it by knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know, covering for each other, going to court, and being court watchers for each other keep getting the same stuff over and over again. I don't know if it's the same person. I don't know. Isn't still practicing attorney and sitting on the bench. Have, have, have they done that? Have poli uh, can they do that? Can a judge be a practicing lawyer and be on the bench? I do know of a, and this I don't know how it can be possible. There's a lawyer who is a lawyer in a small town, a city, and he is their city attorney and he is still he still has his private practice how is that possible the one in your traffic case was that's pretty bizarre thanks for the follow i'll follow you back i'll stalk you back they took our jobs yeah they did reagan did he sent all that manufacturing overseas and then they claimed it was what when please but who did it bust? It busted America. It busted the middle class. I grew up when you, you could have a manufacturing job and have a house and a car and a family and pay. What do you do now? Yeah, 1981. There's no state that can that gives you a license to practice law. You, yeah, I know. It should, though. We the people should. Yeah, it worked for GM. Yeah, right? And probably had a nice life. Probably had money. Had a pension. What happens when when they just lose and board flip and end all because we gave up? I'm losing my voice. Like, I'm just, it's, it's emotionally draining to keep saying, don't give up. Don't, don't hand over your power. You are your strong. Thing they need to tell you. You better know. Know what you know. Know what you don't know. Go on Google Scholar. Go on there. You can. It's Google Scholar. 
go in there, pick your state, pick and get in the cases, and start with in quotations, good citizen. But from there, you can you can um, Google all kinds of terms and find out what they're throwing at you. You can go on YouTube and you can um, put in a um, like a term like let's say non protonc, and you can get a definition and you can get the pronunciation. We have all this for free. Why would we sit there and sit in our hands? Because you know what happens when you sit in your hands? You get poop in your hands. Yeah, it court and lawyer for everyone's experience can be very different. Yes, it can be. And that's I know this is generalizations, but you know, it cannot hurt you to know what you know and know what you don't know. It cannot hurt you to do your due diligence. Why do police feel threatened by people saying police account? That's right. When they want accountability, because if it's good, if it makes it good for everybody, then isn't that good for them too? Because that's not the gist of it. That is, I had someone who uh, they went through like being just persecuted by a police officer, and they did sue him in federal court, and uh, the jury sided halfway in their favor. Unfortunately, not the whole way. They did find that the police officer had threatened, intimidated. And was it threatened, intimidated, and harassed him? And it all started because he ticked off a town council member by saying, stop posting so many signs. And the town council member was a realtor who kept posting signs. And then they found, and then this, the, it just started this snowball effect. It was horrible. So anyway, it's all connected. That's what I'm trying to tell you. From all, <laughs> from all of my experiences with people. Yes, the good ones insist on being insist on being transparent. Yeah, why wouldn't you? The traffic judge told me he would hold me in contempt if I didn't understand I needed a court and dot 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 dot. I don't think it's GM anymore. They've sold out to new owner. And right, get to writing. Uh, judging police officers is something we have to be careful of, and um, we have to use balance. Well, yeah, because they'll get you. They'll retaliate against you. You say all police officers are just too rough and bad criminals walk free. We don't want that to happen. No, you need, you need, you know, strong, good people. There's a difference between being a, you know, someone who um, effectively um, enforces the law and does it with an even temper basket case psychopath that should probably be in a Looney Tune, whatever. I mean, I don't know. Do we want people hurting people? I don't know. Good. I hope you be, Cisco, I hope you become a great police officer. Be good. Please, please consider the little guy first. Not bad guys. No, you get the bad guys. <laughs> but, you know, make sure that people's rights are protected. Please, please, please. And then, you know, encourage other good policing and try to create a, an environment in and community within the police force that is conducive to good policing. Please do that for us. We would love it. Courts are not corrupt. Prove me wrong. Don't have to. Um, don't sue the cops. Sue his bond. Yeah. Some people have said that, but it's not a very high bond. I was looking at because someone was telling me that the other day. How much bond did you find? But I guess if you sue the bond, okay, so I'm, okay, tell me if I'm wrong. If you sue the police officer's bond and they can't replace it, does that mean they can't be a police officer anymore? Only if you're not in the wrong. And that's try not to be in the wrong, right? We were talking about that earlier. Try not, you know, don't run through that stoplight if you don't need to, unless you got to save your life, right? Uh, don't run through that stop sign. Don't speed. Don't speed through a daggone school zone. Um, don't steal from the store um, you know, unless you're starving. I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to do that, but otherwise, you know, why don't break the law? Don't get caught up in this because they're just generating money off of you. And again, your reputation and your character are the most important asset that you have. Why would you tarnish it on your own? Why would you do that? Don't hand that over to them because that's what they want. Effectively, they want to get take and remove your credibility once they remove your credibility they own you they own you when they take your credibility yes the court system is being run by the buddy system and poor people can't afford attorneys and sometimes even if you have money you can't because your money is no good in their courts if they want to destroy you that is true 
courts are all of a sudden corrupt because of you know who on trial. I don't know about that. <clears throat> Remain in honor. Yes, honor to who though, DJT? Honor to who? To yourself. Remain in honor to yourself. Protect your good name. Protect your reputation. Even if you kind of tarnished it to begin with, or maybe you got caught up in something and it got tarnished, you can turn that around. Get it polished up again, guys. Get it cleaned up. Let's go. Because <laughs> once they have your reputation in their hands, once they steal that from you, you are over. They've got you. They've got you. King Bully, my report said Ohio Society IBR was the victim. Not sure what that is. And yes, it is exactly, Kevin. It's gotten worse and less. I think it's the worst. I think it's the worst I've ever ever experienced. I've ever seen. It's just like we're now. They're just like, just openly. They don't even care, and nobody's doing anything about it. Incident based reporting system. Oh, my! I uh, minored in criminal justice. I'm assuming that's self reporting, right? Because that's what they can they can fudge. Oops! I grabbed the wrong thing again. Yes. 10,000% and more. Infinity. Infinity correct. <laughs> so the dashboard computer was the victim. Ooh, I don't know what that was. You have to be able to question your victim, and it can't be the DA. Hmm. Then, yes, you should. Well, yeah, you got a victim. Hopefully, you don't have a victim. You mean you got to question the person, your accuser. We'll call it that because we don't want to say that you want to go after your victim because then you're kind of admitting it. The courts are no more. The problem is we just know more and we've got more out there and it's not getting fixed. So it's at least back in the day it was covered up. A deal. His wife lied and said he did not live there. That's not good. There's a word that we could use when we go into court. I'll look it up. They are. I agree, especially in family court. Yes, family court's the worst. It really is. It's horrible, the mill and what they do to children. I mean, they just really wreak havoc on their poor little lives. It's sad. Well, that's what I, honestly, isn't the worst person the person who's complicit when they know this stuff is going on and they're not saying anything? If somebody accuses you of a crime and you are found innocent, the accuser should serve the sentence. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. Well, there must be some claim, claims, though, or causes of action for that. But, yeah, you'd think, because in criminal court, a lot of people have to spend a lot of money to defend themselves and come out, and they have no way of recouping those losses. It could be a lot of money. That's right. Whatever pushes their agenda, what's easy, right? Because it's it's all pretty much, um, how would you say it? It's engineered. It's it's like they've perfected it. So they know what they care about and what they don't care about. And you see that. Look for the pattern or practice, and then you, if you see it and you're right, then you'll know you're pretty darn smart. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Look for the patterns of practice. It's almost like a crystal ball. And the other thing to learn is about narcissism. Not right now. You go pull weeds. Oh, no, you did not. Um, you don't have to prove I'm wrong. It's just, to, it's just to get some dialogue. This is TikTok. Come on. Just play along with the game. Because <laughs> we're actually doing something pretty, I think, pretty valuable here. We're all sharing, like ways to kind of keep ourselves and safe and to be the best advocate for ourselves that we can from don't ruin your own reputation and if you did make a misstep and you hurt your reputation get out there and polish it back up start flying straight you know don't go through running red lights and running stop signs and speeding don't hurt kids or animals or elderly people be a good person be a good citizen and that's something you should look up on google scholar is in quotations what a good citizen is and what the court expects of you it's and when you get yes make sure that you get that dismissal of prejudice i agree oh my goodness yeah i've, I've seen some horror stories because the people didn't billions of people are all wrong and blank is right. I don't know why y'all keep bringing in Mr. T and Brandon. Why do you? I don't care. They're so powerful and they have so much money. None of this actually touches them. This is all a big show. But for us, it really does affect us because we're the ones with the money they're trying to get. They're trying to get that money to trickle up from us. 
A citizen is somebody that works for a corporation. Remember that. And it's right. Now go look up good citizen. Yep. Because at the end of the day, the bar is a corporation, isn't it? <clears throat> if you don't work for the... Yes. There you go. If you don't work for the corporation, then you're a man or woman, not a... Please. Yeah, go look up good citizen. It's so interesting. Not just you, King. It sounds like you, you already know. No one should be able to claim that you did something and you're guilty. They should have to prove. Yes. The courts are game. Yeah, they're kabuki theaters, what we call them. <clears throat> Find a lawyer that is no or is friends with the judge. Yeah. <laughs> you'll pay extra, but you'll get some... I don't even think you will. Depends. But no. You know what? You need to know that the lawyer is actually not selling you down the river. Because what if you hire that person as a friend with a judge... He's going to sell you out, and you don't know how to catch him from selling you out. And then he sells you out, and he goes, well, there's nothing I could do. That's just the way it went down. <laughs> how do you know? So, do your due diligence. Look, and go look at it. Go look at it tonight. Do some, some research on there. First thing you should research is, in quotes, good citizen. Yeah, they tennis together they golf together they who knows what else they're doing together it's kind of scary to think about it look up habeas corpus the first duty of any lawyer or attorney is to the court you got it you got it right but but what is our first and even if you have children the duty is to yourself first like when you're on an airplane and what do they tell you what are the when you're on an airplane what You put that oxygen mask on yourself first, the adult parent or guardian. Put that mask on yourself so that you stay alive so that you can make sure these kids stay alive. Well, that's what I'm going to tell you, too, about life. <clears throat> you know, when it comes to your kids, you come first. Because if you don't come first in this kind of scheme, then you can't help protect them. Fake news. <laughs> uh, I wish it was. I wish it was. It's not. It's not. Let's read some of these. I'm going to find this again. Oh my gosh. Well, and then I'm going to remind you what a Judas horse is, and we, or a Judas lawyer. It's the same thing as a Judas horse. So if you know what a Judas horse is, just take out horse and put lawyer in there, and you're done. And here's the definition: a trained horse released at the trap entrance to draw the wild ones into captivity. Okay, so a trained lawyer released at the trap entrance, which is the court, to draw the target into captivity, a.k.a. to where they can take their assets. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Anger management's not that bad. Sometimes you just get it over with. <laughs> but, and, uh, but other times it's really serious, and we can't have that. Thank God my son is with me and will be 18 in August. I, I'm happy for you. I am. I had a public defender and went to for five years. Oh, no. Did you help that public defender? Did you make sure the public defender knew what he was doing? Were you doing your due diligence? Were you doing your legal research? Did you understand the, the um, crime you're accused of? And did you make sure you knew the elements and you knew the case law that could help you to beat whatever it is if you're innocent? Hopefully corruption doesn't inflict every single one of them and at the end justice is blind. I, we would hope so. It's just unfortunately we're meeting so many people that are being impacted by it. I was young, drywall wizard. Yeah, well, you know what? We can always clean that up, right? So get your, you know, you probably have, because uh, at the end of the day, your reputation, your honor, your, um, your whole, your character, everything is the most important thing that you own. Do not tarnish it on your own. Don't beat it up on your own. And especially don't let anyone else do it. And if it does happen that you make a mistake, clean it up. Let's stop letting them make a money mill out of us. Let's, let's not let that happen. If you didn't commit the crime of water, then you didn't commit the crime. Well, I'll tell you, I went, I, this didn't, this does not make me know everything about it. That's for sure. Cause I only watched a few videos on maritime law and all that was, was contract law and talking about carriers and they had, it was kind of confusing because they talked about how one way you could be the person who's shipping the stuff. And then once it's shipped off, you're no longer accountable for it. 
but other times you're accountable all the way through to delivery. I mean, it was, that was maritime law to me. I can help you clean. You're going to get paid guaranteed. <laughs> That'd be nice. Think the proof think the proof needed is on you. Well, yeah, everything is on us. You you are your best advocate. And if you can, if you're healthy and you're mentally uh able to help yourself and physically able to help yourself, you better be doing it. We are our best and strongest advocate. And so what I'm saying is know what you know, know what you don't know, because what you don't know can and will be held against you in a court of law. That means going and doing your due diligence by doing your legal research. Go to your state. You can go to the state case law through Google Scholar. You can go Westlaw at the local law library. Your your library may even have it, a subscription. It's all electronic. There's no excuse anymore. With a lot of stuff, you have questions. Um, try to make, make sure you have the best lawyer possible because this is really about uh, cons consumers of legal services. That's who we are. I... I know. I looked up something. You have a right to tell a cop to stop hurting others. Do we really? I, I'm interested in that. What, what state did you find that in? Authenticated in Taiwan, Jamaica, not Hague. That's where they send you when you... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that, if you want to be your own postal service, you just do your own paperwork. We must prove jurisdiction. I like that one. That's a good one to research. What if they don't have jurisdiction over you? And then there you are submitting yourself. Oh, <laughs> well... Duh, don't do that. You're right on the money. Yes, I am. We are, unfortunately, because we've been through it. I worked in Florida um, Sun for five years on I-10, cutting bushes in the swamps like a slave. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did you see what, what um, DeSantis said about that? He doesn't think anybody needs a break in the hot weather. Go look that up. Yes, yeah, some lawyers are corrupt, for sure. Them, I'd say the majority of them are, because if, cause if they're not actually the ones committing the corruption, they're the ones watching it and letting it happen. That makes them equally corrupt. A certificate of baptism, and you let the judge know I stand by my creator's law. Well, we do. Don't we have a natural law? Whether irrespective of your religion. The law of nature, we have a natural right to certain things, to write clean air, clean water, to be able to get food for ourselves, to be able to grow food. It's all being taken. <clears throat> when you talk about lawyers, mm -mm -mm -mm, it's not political, although they could have a political um, motivation. But for me, it's not. It's not politics. It doesn't matter. They've got us all hornswoggled. Is that the word? They've got us all ate up with this. D versus R, blue versus red. Ridiculous, because they've so oversimplified it, and we're all just latching on, going, yeah, that's me. Uh, I'll take your de your title and your definition, put it on myself. No. No, 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 no. That's how they're getting away with this. Man and woman cannot speak to the, hmm, maybe. Uh, thanks for the follow. I will follow you back. Thanks for all the likes and all any gifts you've given. I don't expect that. I don't get much trust. Obviously. And I'm not looking to become a millionaire on TikTok. I'm looking to share information with my fellow TikTok friends so that we can keep ourselves safe and keep our family safe because you're keeping them safe. You can't keep them safe if you don't keep yourself safe. Remember, just like when you're on an airplane and, and the flight attendant is going through her spiel, she's going to come by. And anybody who's got children, she's going to say, then help the children. Do not put them on the children first. So that's important. Don't run those red lights. Don't run those stop signs. Don't speed. Please don't. Don't give them their money. Uh, speak on your behalf as a defendant or a plaintiff. Absolutely. Always speak on your behalf. Always, unless you're right. And you need to talk to a lawyer about that. But what I'm saying is be your best advocate. You can speak to your lawyer. So if you've got some kind of criminal case pending against you or civil, or maybe you're fronting a civil case because you were in a car accident and you need to recoup your losses, do your due diligence the best that you can quiz and query that lawyer if they tell you if they mention like the duty to cooperate with your insurance company or something crazy like that go find out what that means don't just sit on your hands because you know what happens when you sit on your hands you get pooping them 
Uh, they aren't hiring. They're getting people info. And where's it going? Who? Uh, TT? The courts are designed for collecting revenue. Yes, they are. That's right. That's right. If you're a citizen part of the corporation, can a corporation run a lot? I don't know. That's an interesting thing. We're waiting for you guys to start proving to us that question because we don't know. I really don't know. Your lawyer isn't your friend. And that's that's pretty much. And you know what? It's true. That is true. Unless it really is your friend. But even then, can you trust them? I don't know. I mean, because you think of these guys, and usually they want, they're like real estate brokers, right? They all want to drive a Mercedes. They all want the Beamer. They all want a big fancy house. They all want to, like, look what I have. Look at this. You know, they're projecting on society. What happens when they're not making enough money to fund that lifestyle? That is when we get targeted. I will follow you back. Lawyers and judges should take oath to uphold the Constitution, and don't they? Don't they take that oath? I just think they're breaking it. Executive administrators, not judges, enforce statutes and codes. Bar attorneys are, s- yeah, they're pr- they're promoting the legal fiction and and the Grateful Dead shall rise for judgment. Okay, well that's a good one. <laughs> I love the Grateful Dead. It would be nice if they did that. Courts courts definitely corrupt. Man with more money or closer to government will always win. That's right, closer to the network to the mafia. Okay, um, well, that's awfully mean. How did you get a TikTok to come on and talk mean to people? Goodbye. They have to take, they have to take it. Okay, we can't read any more of those. We have U.S. military, not American military. Oh, yeah, exactly. U.S. is the corporation, isn't it? I think if we put everybody in the court system in jail, we could hire the janitor to run the court. <laughs> you cannot use the U.S. Constitution to defend yourself because you are not a party of it. Um, it. We are the benefactors of it. We may not be, like, we can't use it against each other, right? But aren't we the benefactors? Red coats and wigs. That's some old stuff. Even if I found guilty, rich man can send clone to do time. Oh, that would, ooh, that's interesting. I wonder... I wonder, could you? I worked for a retired lawyer. How did that go? The girls, how'd they go? CPS and family court are in bed together. I, yeah. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. I don't think CPS protects kids in family court enough, honestly. I used to, I was a guardian ad litem for eight years. I volunteered, so I didn't get paid. I did it for almost eight years. And I would go and I'd get assigned a case or two and I would, you know, go and talk with the kids. I'd meet with them. I'd meet with their parents or guardian, wherever they were. A lot of times they were placed with someone other than the parent. And um, I don't, I think, I don't know. It's just a crazy, the courts are just a crazy, corrupt world. It really was. I remember, and I really was. What I will tell you is when I was a guardian ad litem, um, the judge was, calling the DCF attorney, sir, even though he knew it was a woman and he kept going, sir, sir, you know, and, and just like cracking jokes and thinking it. I wish I could still be doing it, honestly, between my stalker and the court corruption and the police, all of that. I'd still be, um, I'd still be in child protection and doing it for the right reasons. They're going to say, you're here because you're you've been accused of breaking a law or code. Yeah, I believe at some point or another recently I've broken the law. Like maybe I've gone a little bit too fast and I caught myself. I don't know. I'll admit to that. I think everybody, everybody, every day breaks at least one law. Because if you speed, because like we have a lot of hills here in Colorado, it's paying attention you can go from like 45 to 55 in like a blink of an eye so yeah it happens Uh, no i was getting stalked by someone who is discrediting me in the community and slandering me and defaming me and so what happens is if you're a guardian ad litem and all that starts get putting into police reports and stuff and all kinds of crazy because this woman was literally nuts certifiable in fact ultimately one of her um fiance He's unalived himself and called her out as a um, smurder culprit because um, she was so rel- um, you, you They'll just bring in all that stuff. At that point, it's like, I'm not going to play that game.
but yeah, watching a uh, making fun of um, a DCF attorney. What kind of a kangaroo court was that? I'm out. <clears throat> working, keep educating yourself. If you look at your speedometer, how no, that's that's not how it works. Sorry, you might live in a flat state. Try living in the mountains. I agree. They were trying to shake me down for money for custody of my son, and they will because you, your child, they're basically held as an extortion tool. We went through it. Hey, Lola. Oh, Lola came. Lola left. Oh, there you are. You're liking my lives. <laughs> hey, Lola. Backing up and hitting a bicycle seems innocent because it's only a bicycle, but it's somebody's property. Yeah, what if a kid was on that bicycle? Exactly. So, we're going to go back to, I'm going to read this to you guys, so you know, part of what our problem is and what we're dealing with is this from the Supreme Court of the United States. And, and when you say, well, you keep complaining about corruption, well, what can we do about it? This is something we could back up and we could start putting, you know, so it says, this is on judicial immunity. It's something you can look up in Google Scholar. And I'm reading it because this is for me, too. This immunity applies even when the judge is accused of acting benefit of the public. Like, whose interest it is that judges should be at liberty to exercise their functions with independence and without fear of consequences. It is a judge's duty to decide all cases within his jurisdiction that are brought before him, including controversial cases that arouse the most intense feelings in the litigants. His errors may be corrected on appeal but he should not have to fear that unsatisfied litigants may hound him and with litigation charging malice or corruption so what the supreme court of the united states told you in 1967 is it doesn't matter if they're corrupt or malicious against you they just can do it and it's for your own good and you can appeal it good luck if you don't have money good luck and good luck if you've got a corrupt court i mean how can <laughs> how can you have justice and how did you have access to the court if a judge acted maliciously or corruptly? That's impossible. You have the right to be an abusive driver, an abuse of anything. Government drives its just authorities from the consent of the governed. Amen. That's why I'm saying we got to stop consenting. How about we stop consenting to judicial immunity? How about we all get together and do a petition and send it back to the Supreme Court? And say, hey, we want to we wanna adjust this because what we're thinking is they've actually turned this against us. When I walk across the street and I'm almost getting ran over because one minute. That's right. That's right. Nobody, that's selfish. No one has the right to do that. And we can just talk that as being ethical and moral human beings. That, yeah, you know what? Look for people. Look, don't, don't just uh, speed. Miss J, yes, we know it's true. The judge's immunity is only if he's in his right jurisdiction and has signed his oath. Amen. But still, think about it. Only um, only option you have is to appeal it? I don't know. What if I don't have the money to appeal it? What if I'm so emotionally drained I can't appeal it? It. Why do I have to appeal malice and corruption? An error is a completely different thing. Malice and corruption is intentional. I don't think police should give tickets for bad drivers. Well, yeah, they should, but because that's for our own care. 100% agree. My friend won by jury and judge overturned. She was 100% the right. Oh, no. Oh, my. The judge did it. Oh, I hate hearing that. The judge ever turned it. Did she appeal? De novo instead of appeal, especially in family court. But isn't de novo underneath an appeal? I mean, it's a part of the appeal. What I'm saying is, world, can a judge act corruptly and maliciously in the court and their judgment stand and us not be able to hold them accountable? We have to appeal them? I don't have, I don't have time and money for that. For them to play games and be this is what the Supreme Court is telling you and they're telling you it's for your benefit which is like it makes my brain hurt it literally makes my brain hurt for the Supreme Court of the United States to tell us that it is the benefit of the public to allow 
malicious and corrupt. Basically, um, outside of the realm of holding them accountable. Yeah, they have taken the IRS out of code enforcement. Have you ever had someone call code enforcement on you? Oh my God, my stalker called code enforcement on me about a barn and it took me like nine months to shake them because I actually, because I had um, a particular kind of zoning, I didn't have to have a permit. And it took nine months to shake them. <laughs> they were on me. If they were out there chasing, you know, those people who do bad things to children, we would not have people doing bad things to children. And that would be wonderful. But these code enforcement officers, because it's a revenue generator, right? Man, they, they stay on you like white on rice. What's your solution? Should we have judges up for election? Well, we should definitely. Well, you got to have elections, but they're appointed, anointed and appointed by the governor. I just gave um, some ideas. One is we need to have lawyers that are licensed and disciplined through the state so that the people can control it and that a special interest group called the bar, basically the lawyers union, isn't letting people get away with some bad stuff. Because at the day, that's at the end of the day, one, that's a, it's a constitutional violation even of our governors. Because if the governors... At least in Colorado and Florida, the governor has a constitutional requirement and obligation to make sure that they have a group in place that are there for what you call judicial qualifications. They're there to make sure that, you know, judges are flying right. But if we're not getting that information to the governor by a proper process and, you know, they're not gatekeeping and protecting these bad judges and bad lawyers, how will the judge ever know, it, or the, sorry, the governor ever know if they're appointing or uh, constitutional obligated duties. Yeah, code violations in some counties can be criminal. It's crazy. Man, those guys will be on you like they're crazy. They will not let go. They're pit bulls. If they would just go after the real true criminals and the cartels, we'd probably be living pretty sweet right now. Get your agent and tell them you want to revoke? Oh, no. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Not all cops are corrupt. That's for sure. And that's the thing, though. They need to stop accusing innocent people of crimes they didn't commit so that they can create money, you know, create a revenue stream. There you go. Any stepping outside of his oath is a violation starting at 250000 each violation. And they should have a bond that covers that. Yep, it is. Well, I'm a little bit past my bewitching hour here. I've got to go back to work. So I'm going to bid you guys adieu and say, false Steve, come on, Steve, um, to come back and um, let's have some more lives. Let's talk this out. Maybe, who knows, maybe some people can get together and start crushing the corruption, start coming up with some things. Like, again, what I think is we need to all get together and petition the Supreme Court to reverse their decision on judges being allowed to act maliciously and corruptly and we're not allowed to do anything about it screw that um but nonetheless um follow me i'll follow you back um and check out my lives as we go this is really about all of us i'm sorry that i yap so much i just try to keep this going because that's what tiktok wants and i want you guys to be engaged because at the end of the day some of you guys can connect and make some changes and make some differences maybe collectively we can do the same so have a great day know what you know know what you don't know and remember even a smart guy is as dumb as a dumb guy when he's wrong, so make sure that you know that you're right. Get out there and do your real legal research if you're dealing with the courts. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.